had an event similar to this called Out of the Dark, where we invited um, um, uh, ministers from uh, across denominational lines uh, to come and have dialogue about the issues of homosexuality in the black church. This year, we have decided instead of um, having continuing that dialogue in the same vein, uh, I think it is important that we engage dialogue with the God that we serve. Amen. And instead of just sitting around talking to each other about it, which is needed, but we also need to spend time talking with our God that we uh, can um, find guidance and direction and how uh, he, the God wants us to be unified as one body. Uh, it is the, uh, the Holy Spirit's job to um, uh, bring us together. But we must also be in uh, one mind and in one accord that we may be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do. Uh, so it's not just about us. It's not just, you know, there, in fact, we're endeavoring to remove the us and them. Yes, yes. And that's what uh, this uh, prayer breakfast is about this morning. We have uh, some prayer focused topics that we're going to uh, deal with on this morning. But first, before we move into that, we want everyone to be uh, fed and enjoy the fellowship. The idea of this was to also invite. Uh, ministers from across the denominational lines to be at a table of fellowship. Uh, there are many of the ministers that I invited did not respond. And so I'm really glad that uh, Sister Rashida is here uh, uh, re video recording this um, uh, event so that uh, we can broadcast it and make it available to those to know that we are very interested in what God has to say to us uh, on today about these issues. Amen. So the, the, when, when we go into prayer, uh, the, it, we know that prayer is a two-way conversation. And so we are beseeching the throne of God, but we are also open to hear from God. And uh, so the, the, the floor is open for the prophetic. The floor is open to receive the word of God. Uh, I, I, I pray that those that are, are, are comfortable in hearing the voice of God, even through scripture, that we can uh, uh, be free to uh, declare what God is saying in this hour. Amen? Amen. So let's just uh, stand as you have room. We're going to pray and we're going to bless the food and we're going to release you into the hands of the uh, deacons and the servers uh, to be served. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those that are gathered here today, willing to seek your face. God, we honor you in this moment to, uh, and asking you to bless the food that has been prepared. God, we ask you to bless the fellowship that is created around these tables. God, bless the, the dialogue that is created around these tables, oh God. And Lord, that we can continue to be the light of the world. And Lord God, we're asking today that each one who comes through these doors will have an experience with you that will be lodged in their heart. That will produce a seed of change, a seed of direction. And God, that will be more open to hear your voice in every way that you're speaking. And Lord God, we'll give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.
could not see. God was preparing me to see. <laughs>
Lord God, let us come forth with you and speak the word with power. God, help us by your spirit to communicate with you. And Lord God, we're asking you to speak back. Speak back to us, God. And God, give us direction and guidance. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to remind us that we are here this morning to create dialogue with the God that we serve. Well, much time has been spent in the past uh, having dialogue with each other on issues that divide the body of Christ and subsequently weaken us. Let us today instead engage God and see how we might have ha how he might have us become more without spot or wrinkle. And so uh, by way we want to just follow the uh, program that we have. I want to bring forward uh, Sister Katrina Smith, who is the praise and worship leader at Living Faith Covenant Church, to talk about why she's passionate about ending denominational el elitism and lead us in prayer on that subject. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Amen. Amen. My passion for denominational elitism is because I grew up apostolic and Pentecostal. And also and during that transition, I attended Baptist churches. I attended full gospel churches. And really what I was searching for was a relationship with God. Amen. And so all of those avenues pointed me to their way of why they were right. But not one of them said, this is the way you need to follow and work out your own soul salvation. Amen. Amen. So during this time, I want to pray and ask, and I pray for all those denominations because I know that all of us have come from different segmented industries and churches and places where we picked up things. But now it's time for us to pick up the whole body and the mind of Christ. Amen. So as we go before the throne of grace, Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you just for doing exactly what it is you called us to do, oh God, and that's to reach the people, oh God, regardless to what they have known and what they've heard, God. We pray it right now that we show them the true and living God that is within us, oh God. We pray right now for relations, relational Christianity, oh God, and that every person that we meet, oh God, we show them God through us, oh God. We pray right now for the full gospel, oh God. We pray for Church of Christ. We pray for Church of God in Christ, oh God. We pray for the Baptists, oh God. We pray for the Pentecostals, God. We pray for the evangelistics. We pray for the uh, Methodists, oh God. We pray for every religion, oh God, that stands in your name. But God, right now we ask for something deeper, oh God. What we ask right now, God, is that they point to you, God. That every church that's open in your name, oh God, on Sunday, on Saturday, oh God. That everybody comes to know the true and living God. We pray right now for a change in the name of Jesus. God, let the atmosphere shift, oh God. And that everybody that's in that place feel a separate wind, oh God. And that's the wind of the Holy Ghost, oh God. We pray right now, God, we give you glory in this place. God, we came out just to pray, oh God. So we ask, oh God, that you move in a mighty way. Lord, we ask that you take your word, oh God, and let your word not just be in the Bible, oh God, but that it lives in our hearts, oh God. That our minds and our hearts and our souls, oh God, are pointed directly towards you, oh God. God, we pray for the pastors and for the leaders, oh God. We pray for the soldiers of the army, oh God, and the Lord. God, we ask that you undergird them with strength even now, God, and that they carry on their legacy, oh God, to the best of you, oh God. It's not over about us, oh God. It's about you. Lord, we pray even now, oh God, for the ministries, oh God, for every ministry that's open, every ministry that's alive in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now for your spirit, oh God, to rest the rule and reign in its place. God, we pray right now that the Holy Ghost that we say we all have is ignited in the name of Jesus. God, we bring our knees right now, oh God, and we ask that you move in a mighty way, God. Every spirit in this place, oh God, that is not of you, oh God, we ask that you bind it up. In the name of Jesus, God, let the fire come in this place, oh God. Lord, we ask for the rain, oh God. God, we ask for everything that we prayed, oh God. We have declarations before you, oh God. And we ask that you move in this place. God, we say hallelujah to you. We cry hallelujah to you. We say hallelujah in this place. God, it's on this place, on this day, oh God. Things that we have, petitions that we have before you, oh God. We ask that you move even now, oh God. We ask right now, you must see. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray. Oh, 
God, we pray, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We pray, oh God. God, we pray. Let your spirit, God, we ask for the Holy Spirit to come, oh God. The Holy Spirit that's within us, oh God. Let it arise afresh, oh God. In the name of Jesus, the oil that's within us, oh God. We ask that that anointing increases even now, oh God. And that we're able to stand the test and trials that come up, oh God. Because we're asking for more of you, God. Lord, deep calls unto deep. And we're asking that you move, oh God, because we have things before you that are not light, oh God. So we ask that you increase us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask. In the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now, Lord. In the name of Impression of sexual orientation in the church. Um, first of all, oppression of the sexual nature is simply a demoralizing of our sexual acts, of our sexual preferences, our gender, our gender specification, our gender identification. That means that we are the oppressed. Because, you know, we are lesbian, we are gay, bisexual, transgender, transsexual, MSMs, WSWs, and straights who love gay people. We are the oppressed. And yes, we are proud, and some of us just now are proud of who we are. Because although we are oppressed, we have found peace in Christ. Yes. And we have found an image of God in ourselves. We have come to terms with what other people have said or still say. And we have learned to lean and depend on Jesus rather than argue, fuss, and fight. Yet we are the oppressed overcomers. The oppressed overcomers. However, we are also the oppressors. All right, all right. Yes. Yeah, it's true. Because while we're in here, they are the prostitutes. They are the drug addicts walking oak lawn and lemon. And oh God. We, we know what they will do for a couple of bucks. They are the ones who go to the bathhouse and the sex clubs and the sex parties and the A4A parties. They are the ones who go to Splash every year. They are the ones with HIV. They are the ones spreading it. They are the prisoners who get turned down in the pen and now have chance encounters with fill in the blank. They are the ones in the bushes. They are the ones going to the rest area bathrooms waiting on the truckers. It's them. It's not us. It's them. But wait. Can't you find yourself in that list somewhere? Are you the oppressed or are you the oppressors? Mark 12 reminds us of when Jesus entered Jerusalem and began answering questions regarding his authority and the law. And a parable is recorded here in Mark 12. And Jesus said, a man planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a pit for the wine press and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the to, to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they seized him and sent him away empty-handed. Then he sent another servant to them, and they struck this man on the head and treated him shamefully. 
He sent still another, and that one they killed. He sent many others, some of them they beat, and others they killed. And he had one left to send, a son whom he loved. And he sent him last of all, saying, Surely they will respect my son. But the tenants said to one another, This is the heir, come, let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him, and they threw his body out of the vineyard. So my question to you is, are you one of the servants, or are you a renter in the vineyard? Oh, God. Now, don't get me wrong, it's, it's hard to live this life when we know that we are the oppressed. And although we are blessed by God, it is sometimes difficult for us to see the blessings when you are constantly oppressed. But I ask you again, are you a servant or are you a renter? It, it, it can get pretty, pretty cloudy sometimes, you know, that, that means that we've been talked about and spat on and we, we finally made it. You know, I've overcome my hangups and it's my time to harvest. But let's get our heads out of the clouds because the vineyard doesn't belong to us. Are you the servant or are you the renter? Because later in the same passage, one of the teachers of the law interrupted Jesus saying, which of the commandments is the most important? And I wonder if you'll allow me to have Holy Spirit imagination real quickly. Because when Jesus answered this question of which commandment is the most important, I picture Jesus taking a moment to look at the ceiling of the temple. And I picture him looking at the painted blues and the golds on the ceiling, which signified the separation between the haves and the have-nots. And I picture him probably looking in the distance and seeing a hallway that led to the Holy of Holies, you know, that was only intended for the chosen priest so they could hear from God. Maybe Jesus thought about what happened just the day before when he overturned the tables of the money changers and seeing those people who were not yet allowed to even come inside of the temple. But I imagine Jesus taking his time with this response and saying to this person, the most important one, answer Jesus is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, one God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. But the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So God, I pray that you replace sexual oppression with a submission to the move of your spirit. Oh God, I pray that you replace our false interpretations of scripture and renew our focus on stewardship and the simple sharing of our gospel, of your gospel to everyone. Oh God, help us to stop using the Bible as the basis for sex-related laws. and God, restore us to the true goal of your scripture, which is to bring us closer to you. Oh God, thank you, Lord. Oh God, I pray that you allow us to learn to love one another truthfully and spiritually, that you open us up to receive from you to give that out and to pour that out into your people, oh God. Not concerned about what kind of sex we have in the dark, but more concerned about, oh God, our hearts and our minds. Oh God. This is my prayer, oh God. In Jesus' name, my prayer. Subject of 
expanding the HIV dialogue in the church. But just as it is an honor, it is also a difficult subject to talk about. I found myself doing more talking with the Lord than I'm actually going to talk to you today because this was a hard one. Because it's a passion that I do actually have. So, many of you sitting here today may have mixed feelings or even negative feelings about this subject. Even more, you may have negative feelings about this subject being talked about in your church. The issue is already in the church, however. The issue is actually the person sitting beside you, or maybe today, or in the pew next to you on Sunday. The so-called issue is better termed a child of God. When we talk about HIV and AIDS, we're talking about people. Let us not forget that these people have a face and a name. They have family and friends. Have a God, and yes, HIV, as they call it, also has a church. I've seen in my many years as a Christian woman, the love that we embrace our fellow Christians with as they have battled cancer, debilitating sicknesses, and other illnesses. And just like many of these other diseases, the cause has never been a reason for us not to show them love and compassion. But those among us with HIV are often too scared to even reach out for that same love and compassion because of fear of stigma, accusations of judgment or rejection. Imagine that burden, how they must feel. And how many of you know that some actually sit there and they sit in church Sunday after Sunday and they just want to be able to tell someone that they are HIV positive but not knowing how that person is going to react, what they're going to say. Some people might actually be afraid to eat out of a plate, touch the cup, anything. That's something that's a feeling that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Also, so as I began to gather my thoughts on this important issue, I struggled with how to convince you of the importance of it all. And God put on my mind just to tell you the facts. The facts that are here in Dallas County alone, there are nearly 14,000 residents living with this disease just here in Dallas County. Not Texas, not any other state, just here, 14,000. Those are just known cases. Then it's reported that of nearly all of those cases, 1,000 are newly infected. And also in that number, there's also 1,000 youth from the ages of 13 to 15 that are also infected as well. So you ask, why is it important that we expand the HIV dialogue in the church? These numbers and our children, our babies, are the main reason why we should also include HIV dialogue in the church. Today, as we discuss how to start the conversation in the church about HIV and AIDS, I'm not an expert on the subject, so I'm not going to give you any medical terminology or scientific understanding on how the disease works. But I am a servant of the Most High God who knows that conversation should always start with Him. We know the power of prayer. This week we've seen it all throughout, starting on Thursday into last night with Pastor Bird. And it was awesome. It was something I wouldn't have missed for anything in the world. So, let's start by praying first for our pastors, then the members of our church, then our communities, then our cities, and so forth. And ask God to help us with this growing epidemic. And if you have a hard time with that, then pray over why. Ask God to help you understand what it is that makes you either fearful of this issue or blind to the compassion and love that each of us deserves, regardless of what plagues us. We can talk about the diseases of the heart and the diseases of the flesh. When it comes to other things, why can't we do the same for those who are battling this disease? But there is a place where this conversation begins. It's on our knees in that special place where you go and pray to the Almighty God. 
pastors, church members, please get educated so that we can start talking to our children. Because as you know, at one time the disease started numbering them at the age of 15, it's now 13. These are our babies that are out there getting infected because they're under a lot of pressure and temptation like never before. Many of us never had to deal with the things our babies are faced with daily. We preach to them about the dangers of drugs and games, but we have to warn them about the other dangers as well. Nearly 1,000 children in our country didn't get that, well in our county didn't get that message, and now they're faced a life without another, a life with another battle that could possibly have been avoided because we didn't take the time out to learn and to reach out to those. I'm not going to beat you down about the countless Bible references about helping the sick and loving your neighbors. That's each and every pastor's and leader's job. But I will tell you that there, that there lies the next step in this dialogue. We must have our religious leaders guide us on a course of reversing the virus that is killing people by the thousands. The message has to come from the pulpits and it has to come loud and clear. Yes. But it can't end there. It has to be emphasized again and again in the church and churches everywhere. With so few role models for our children, our pastors and our leaders that we have are in many cases are all they have. And they hear you. They don't always listen, but they do hear you. Like myself, our leaders don't have to become experts in this area, but we have to learn the facts. Many people with this disease get it because they just weren't aware of the facts. And many of us without it don't know them either. Lack of understanding leads to fear and to stigma. And fear and stigma leads to silence. And silence does eventually lead to HIV and AIDS. For those of you who are present, who are HIV positive, God loves you. And I love you too. I know that many of you are hiding this from the world and that the burden is yours until you feel like you can talk to someone. But know that while, that while we talk about HIV dialogue in the church, just remember that we need your voice to be heard. And you've been looking for someone to listen. And I am that person that will listen. You can talk to me. And I'm pretty sure you can talk to many of the pastors and leaders that are here today. They won't ever go back and speak your business to anyone. You can always feel safe with your pastor. A friend of mine always likes to remind me of something. And I want to share that with you today. He has this saying, you don't live with HIV. HIV lives with you. And my prayer for today is this, Lord, just to come in and just touch each and every past, pastor's heart, prick their heart, their minds. Let them know that if they're not educated, they can be educated in order for each and every one of us to learn, to be aware of what's going on so that this disease won't continue to be an epidemic. We can get a hold of it. These things I ask in your name. Amen. by oppression, injustice by demonization, injustice by many different forms. And I want to take this opportunity to just raise the issue of our injustice on racial inequality and remind us that racism still exists. That racism is still active. It is still alive. And, and I'm, I'm really going now to the point of saying that it exists on both ends. I know many of my brothers and sisters don't believe that black folk can be racist. And by some definitions, that is true. But there are some things that we do as well that are racist in their activities, not necessarily in the social structures, but there are things that we do also as well that are racist in their activities. And I am looking forward to the day that we can be the tapestry that God created us to be. I often ask people when, when they see me, what is, what is it that you see? I, often, I like to ask my white brothers and sisters that. When you see me, what is it that you see? Because many of them believe that we should have a society that is colorblind. 
I'm not praying for a colorblind society. When you see me, I want you to see that I am black. I want you to see that there are some things that go along with that, that I do identify with my brothers and sisters who are in the African-American experience in the United States, and I, that should be valued just as your experience as a white person in the United States should be valued. Your experience as a Hispanic should be valued. A Latino Latina should be valued. Your experience as an Asian American, whether you're Chinese, Japanese, Indian, however you define yourself, it should be valued because it takes us all to do what God called us to be. Paul talks about a body. He said the whole body is not an eye, but it has hands, it has feet. Every point, every joint that the body has, has a purpose. And we all have a purpose in the body of Christ across racial divides, across all kinds of divides. We are important to the body of Christ. And I want to spend just a little bit of time praying for the church in this regard. Because somehow, sometimes the church misses that whole thing. And we set up churches. And Martin Luther King is also credited for saying that, that on Sunday morning is the most divided and segregated uh, period. Sunday morning's at 10.30. It's 10.30 now. It may have been 10 o'clock then. But I'm not sure that that's a bad thing. Because we all have cultural things that we identify with. But it is a bad thing when we can't move out of that segregated period and come together and work as the body of Christ. It is a bad thing when I can't work with you because of your ideas of who I am. It is a bad thing when we allow our differences to become the dividing factors that keep us from doing the will of the Lord. And so I pray for the church today. I pray for the church that we would wake up. I pray for the church that we would stop trying to make ourselves be the big thing and really see the body of Christ for who the body of Christ is. And that is many people from different walks of life. Many people. Bow your heads with me. God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you and blessing you and praising your name. We come worshiping you in this moment, oh God. Hallelujah. This moment that we stand in the United States of America and endure racial prejudices and endure racial superiorities and endure racial inequalities and we stand oh God with our hands raised worshiping you because we understand oh God that the world in all of its many different expressions is still an expression of you and we pray oh God that you would arise and your enemies would be scattered in the name of Jesus. God, we right now go beyond the human part of this. And we speak now to the very demonic intent of deception. The demonic intent of division. The demonic intent of separation. In the name of Jesus. And we call it out, God. And we say that we will not have it. That we will be the body of Christ. We speak into the atmosphere. And we command all superiorities and inferiorities to come down. And to be subject to the mind of God. Every high thing, every high place will be brought down. And every low place will be exalted. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that we see ourselves for who we are. And we value the value that you have given us to the world. And that, oh God, we will be able to not only see our value, but see the value of others that are in our space. 
others that walk with us, others that live this human experience. We can't do that, God, until we see God in all of us. So we say again, Lord, arise and let your enemies be scattered. Ha, hallelujah. Arise, O oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. Make us one not only in the spirit, but make us one in humanity. Make us one, O oh God, in social work, O oh God. Make us one in justice. Make us one, O oh God, in the work of the cross. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We give you glory and honor. And we say, it is so. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Dear God, I stand before you to pray to end transgender oppression in the church. Something very special to me because I should not even be standing here today. I should have committed suicide eight years ago. I should have committed suicide five years ago. I should have been dead six feet under today. Because I serve a God who told me that he loves me despite of. Yes. And despite of the transition, that I am still wonderfully created, made by him. Yes. And I stand before you to partner with me in the spirit. Yes. That we may be able to proclaim our brothers and sisters who don't have the opportunity yes. to be loved on. To be taught spiritually. To let them know that they do have a right to the tree of life. Yes. So as we go before the Lord, Lord, we want to thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for this day, God, that you give it to us, to listen to us, God. God, we thank you right now for who you are. And because who you are is who we are. Because you've created us in the image of you, God. So, God, regardless, God, of my transition and regardless of the questions, are you boy or girl, your spirit resides on the inside and we thank you for that right now God now God I ask you right now to cover my community cover the community right now God regulate our minds God cover our ears God touch our heart God allow somebody God to love on them to let them know God that they are and that they will always be belong to the kingdom of God. Now, God, look at the church, God. God, a lot of churches are preaching love. But yet, God, we're being thrown out. So I declare that we end right now, God, in the church, the oppression against my trans brothers and sisters. That we speak to that enemy of depression. Because we can't find where to go, God, and to be loved on. And God, we speak to that enemy of possession. That we're not just a toy. And we're not just a fetish. And we're not crazy or cuckoo in the mind. But God, that we were created as humans, God. And we should be treated such as. Now God, creating us a secret place. God, when the church has hurt us, God, just like David, God, let us be in the place where we can encourage ourselves. And then direct our mind, God, where we can go, God, and get fed spiritually, God, so we can grow in the abundance of the anointing, God, so we can do the work that we were assigned to do at birth. For the work must be completed by each individual that includes the trans until the day of Jesus Christ. So now, God, I ask you to touch the minds, the heart of your people. To see us, God, as they see themselves. God, we ask you right now to allow us to put on the whole armor of God. That the enemy darts that he tries to throw to us, God. That they will not harm us. They will not pierce us. Cover us by your blood, God. That the darts of discrimination, God, would not penetrate us. 
that the dawn of shame, God, for being who we are. God, Jesus, I, I bind the enemy of the dark, God, yes. for being excluded. Yes. God, find us a place, God, that we can be included yes. in everything that you have for us, God. Yes. Yes. And God, I ask you right now, God, that you put in us, God, a clean heart yes. and a right spirit. Yes. Send someone, God, that has a word. Yes. And when the word is given out in love, God, that that individual, God, must say, what must I do to be saved? Yes. And not concerned about the discrimination, the oppression. Yes. But God, we thank you for the atmosphere that you've created for us, God. Yes. That it is true that we will not be left without a witness. Yes. And we thank you for those church doors, those pastors that allow us to come in and be who we are. Yes. And not hypocrite to ourselves or hypocrite to society. But we're authenticity enough, God, that we can lift our hands and say, God, we love you. That it had not been you on our side, we wouldn't know where we would be. Now, God, bring us out of the dark yes, God. into the morning acceptable light. Hallelujah. Because the word of God said, you are the light and you are the light of the world. And the new Jerusalem shall need no light because you are the light. Now, God, be the light that's in us, God. Show yourself strong, God. Allow your light, God, for us to educate, promote inclusivity, God. That we may walk hand in hand, loving one another. That we can be completed, God, as the body, as Pastor Bird was saying. Because in this kingdom, God, that you've created, it is diverse. If it was not, there would be no need to have a difference, God that you have made us in humanity. So God, we thank you for the difference. And with the difference, God, it completes the puzzle. Yes. And at the end of the day, God, I ask you just to cover us, God. Yes. Cover the minds of your people. Yes. Cover my brothers and sisters, God. Yes. We're being murdered all over, God. Just for being who we are. Oh. Touch the adversary, God. Touch, touch right now, God. Yeah. Not another day. Not another day, God. Not another day, God. We will stand, God, and say, God, that everybody is welcome to the kingdom of God. Now, God, give us the bold spirit, God. Oh, glory. To not just fit in, God. But be that beacon of life, God, for inclusivity. That it may save someone's life, God. Hallelujah. And in the process, it may educate them. And then they will also become whole. Now, God, this is my serenity prayer. That today we will come out of the dark. Yes. And we will come into the acceptable life. Yes. Because you are love. Yes. And because you are love, God, we love ourselves enough, God, to be who we are. Transparent and authentic. Hallelujah. So we can grow, God. And at the end of the day, God, when the dead in Christ shall rise, we want to be there, God, to be caught up to meet you in the sky. And we want to hear those words, God, because we were true to ourselves. That well done, thy good and faithful servant. It's in your son, John, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
God, we need you to rise. In order for you to rise, sometimes we got to go low. Mm. And there's many darts and bullets and arrows that fly. If we would learn to go low, all of that would miss us. If we would learn to bow before the throne of grace, hmm, we wouldn't be taken out as often. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Social elitist. Classism. The haves and the have-nots. It ought not to have a place in the body of Christ. Uh, one of the reasons I'm passionate about this and the, the very reason why this ministry exists in the way that it does. I will know, not know true success in the body of Christ until the rich man can worship next to the homeless man. Till the homeless man can worship next to the rich man. And there be no apprehensions and there be no feeling out of place that each individual's success in this life will be determined solely on their relationship with God. That there are no comparisons. There is no well, you speak in tongues and I don't. Uh, uh, I, you may not have a place to bathe, but I do, so I will share it with you. You may not know how to make it home by yourself at night in the dark. See, we all have something that we can learn from each other. No matter what station of life I happen to be in. I may be living indoors right now. But there may come a time when that may not be the case. And I'm going to need somebody to help me show me the ropes to show me how to stay alive how to make it where I can sleep without ending up in jail you know there are some things that I don't know but when we come to the house of the Lord we should all be able to benefit from the experiences that God has given each and every one of us so you ought not come to the house of God and be able to look down your nose at anybody because they got something. They got something that you need. And so it is my passion to erase the lines that divide us. That we can have a unified worship experience in the body of Christ. Hmm. And so, I pray today, authoritatively, to break down the ideas, the mindsets, that would say, I have no need of thee. God, right now 
I come to you, I seek your face in the presence of your people, God. God, that we would huh, come together in unity and breaking down in our own minds. That we will come together and begin to see people the way that you see them. That we will take on the eyes of Christ individuals the way that you see them. Looking beyond the faults and seeing our needs. And God, I break the spirit that would come into the house of the Lord and into the body of Christ to cause people to be distracted from any other truth. Be distracted from the truth <laughs> that you have poured out your spirit upon all flesh. And God, we thank you for changing us, for changing our minds, for renewing our minds by the word of God. And God, I'm asking you right now that any inhibitions that we have be broken down. Anything that would prevent us from sharing the good news of the gospel. Anything that would stop us or prevent us from going to talking to those who would be strangers to us. The ones that don't look like us. The ones that don't smell like us. The ones that don't talk like us or eat grits the way we do. Hallelujah. <laughs> God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking you to speak to us. And by your spirit, you would. Man, my mama used to call it, I got a prick in my spirit. That you would prick us in our own prejudices. In our own. Uh, colored glasses. Help us to see the world the way you see it. Yes, mm. And then help us, God, to walk in love. Yes, and so I call it what it is. Division. Yes. Oppression. The spirit of elitism. Yes, hmm. The spirit of classism. Yes. I break your power right now in the name of Jesus. I break your power right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that as for this house, those that come here will be able to stand side by side, arm in arm, be able to hug and embrace no matter how much money I have in my pocket, no matter how many days I may have gone without a bed. Yes. Lord, we receive the mantle of the love of Christ in the name of Jesus. And we realize, God, that it may not be an overnight thing for us, yes, yes. but we accept the process. Yes, we accept the change. We accept the turn. And we repent, oh God. We turn yes, yes. and change our minds to move in a direction toward you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, 
whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Um, now think about how uh, the things that we do uh, that are oppressive theology, um, and we can argue and fight over the details of who God is, how human he is, or how uh, God he is. And what God really wants us to see is just how deeply he loves for us. Yes. Yes. Uh, That's good. That's good. And that he wants only those things that teach us to accept that love uh, in all the things that we do. Uh, so I just want to pray for that. Um, God, thank you for the gift of your word, God. Thank you for giving us instruction and guidance for living life with you. God, help us to use that word only to bring ourselves closer to you. Yes. Only to reach those that are far away, God. Yes. So that we can all live with you, God. Yes. To be wrapped up in your love, God. And to receive your grace, God. Yes. God, forgive us for using your word to divide. Yes. Uh, for using your word to spread hate, God. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Help us to Bring everything into your order, God, yes. so that we can invite those in who are on the outside, yes. so that we won't stifle your love, so that we won't put roadblocks in the way. Yes, yes. God, help us to only focus on those things that are kind, yes. on those things that bring joy, God, yes. on those things that bring healing and mercy, yes. and on those things that help others to see that you are there for them. Yes. That your love is available. God, help us to train our minds to accept your love. Yes. To not put roadblocks in our own way, God. Yes. To receive the gift that you give us. Um, to receive it in our hearts and in our minds and in our actions and our, our interactions between each other, God. Thank you for your mercy. Yes. Thank you for making it new every morning, God. Yes. So that we can adjust the way we think uh, every day, God. Yes. So that your holiness can be seen in us. Help us to only hold on to those theologies that bring you glory. Yes. That lift up your name, God. That helps us to depend on you. Yes. So that your name be glorified. Yes. In all the things that we think, in all the things that we say, God, be glorified. Let your love be this morning.